All right, guys, so now what I'm gonna do, this is a closed road, but I wanna show you just how stable this bike is. Let's bring it up to speed and I'll take my hands off. guys Matt from Spark and I'm going to give you more of an overview of the 8 kilowatt Javelin. Two videos ago I put out our 10 kilowatt build that we did with Powerful Lithium on a Brute and I briefed you guys on this 8 kilowatt Javelin and why I think it's such a great option when you compare it to a high powered bike like that. Today I'm going to kind of overview on why Spark is focusing on building higher powered Javelins versus the Brute. So I've brought out three recent builds. The one in the middle is the one that we showed off initially kind of in its prototype stage. Um, it's a raw frame and it looks pretty gnarly. We raced this bike recently. And then the two on the side are kind of some finished products. Um, those are actually 4K javelins, but I thought you would like to see what a finished bike looks like versus a prototype. So first off, let's take a closer look over here. This one is pretty beautiful. This is in peacock green and the customer had a brown seat made for it. it has a mono headlight, little cafe fairing on there. Um, you know, brushed metal side panels and it's got that 4,000 watt motor in the back that peaks up to about 8,000 watts. This one on the side over here is a totally different feel. So it's the same exact bike, but this customer had us put a little rear fender on it, which looks pretty cool. These bullet turn signals, all blacked out side panels, and you can't really see it right now because it's so bright out, but there's actually a whole underglow system on this guy. Pretty cool, it can do any color you want. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is talk about the difference between the Brute and the Javelin and why we focused on the Javelin for high speed. So the Brute gets its name for good reason. This thing is an absolute monster. It's one of the most durable e-bikes ever produced. It uses these crazy thick one inch dropouts, heavy duty aluminum frames, motorcycle brakes, motorcycle tires, blah, blah, blah. But there's a few things. It has a short wheelbase, right? And most importantly, it has a very steep front fork. And those two things combined make it very good for city riding and commuting and very nimble kind of stuff, but they don't make it great for high top speed. And that's where the Javelin comes into play. Javelin uses a much longer wheelbase. It uses larger, narrower tires and a much more slack front fork. That front fork angle is the most critical thing. Um, that all combines to a much more stable ride. At 60, 65 miles an hour, I can take my hands off those handlebars and just coast, and the bike will stay razor straight. So I think it's time that we take it on the road and see just what this eight kilowatt motor can do. So this eight kilowatt version of Javelin, I'm hitting mid uh, 70s. I probably could hit 80, but I just, you know, I, I'm really more conserved on these bikes. I like to make them last, so I don't set those phase amps all the way to the max. I don't set the line amps all the way to the max. I want the bikes to last. So let's see what we can do on a fairly conservative tube. About 76. that front fork angle um, and so let's do 40 miles an hour and I'll take my hands off all right no hands raise it straight let's bring it up to 60 guys so now what I'm gonna do this is a closed road but I want to show you just how stable this bike is now I don't have any speed wobble huge thing let's bring it up to speed and I'll take my hands off Amazing. 
as well. We don't use regen brakes, we use actual motorcycle brakes. We don't use bike brakes. Let's do stability again. I'm talking about guys the wheelbase the fork angle it all comes together in a super stable ride but let's take out a four kilowatt javelin and compare it okay so i am taking out a gen 2 javelin let me pop it into mode three this is a four kilowatt motor will peak up to about eight um just a little overview. This bike is fully customizable, guys. Any frame color you can imagine, we can paint them in. We have headlight options. Um, this bike started around $4,600, yeah, $4,600, $4,700. We offer freight shipping as well as local pickup. Um, and you know, this may not be the eight kilowatt bike, but it is still plenty powerful, guys. And you gotta keep in mind, interchangeable you could buy a bike like this to start and then you could upgrade to an eight kilowatt if you want to down the road so let's see what we can do on the four kilowatt pound rider I'm a small guy um, so I can get this bike up middle 60s but I would say conservatively you know you look at 60 miles an hour across the board. The Javelin is really this platform, and if you were to get a 4,000 watt version of it, you can take that swing arm off in the future and add an eight kilowatt kit. So let's talk about that kit. So the eight kilowatt kit is an extended swing arm. So this is about four inches longer. It is also quite a bit thicker this direction, right? There's a lot more force going on and it needs that extra, extra thickness on there. In the back, it is an 8,000 watt motor this is a custom spec from Powerful Lithium. It is pushing crazy, crazy power through this bike. And to make it all work, we're using Michelin Pilot 2 street tires on it. This is a very high speed tire, has excellent grip. It may not look as thick as some of the other tires, but it is a perfect tire for this setup, guys. We've tried a lot of different options. In the inside, there's a bunch of electronics going on and you can kind of see how this looks on this prototype version but on a finalized bike it is all nice and clean and put together right but that is a far driver nd 72680 um if you did a kit on a gen 1 javelin this would also work but we will use a slightly different far driver controller to make sure it's all plug and play with your bike so you get an upgraded uh, controller and then on the inside you get an upgraded battery also from powerful lithium so that right there is a 59 amp hour um, it's using molly cell p45b's i believe might need to correct that um, and it is just an unbelievable combo it's an eight kilowatt in the back plus that monster battery plus an extended swing arm plus an updated controller there's a lot going on here but if that's outside your budget and you just you can't afford this entire combo what you can do is buy those parts individually so if you go to our website and you look at the kit you're going to see that you can buy just the swing arm and the motor and use your own controller and battery or you can buy it with just a controller or just with a battery so you can do pretty much any combination you want the other thing that you could do is say i want to put an even crazier battery in there and say get that then i'm not going to buy the battery from spark and i'm going to have somebody else custom build a battery for me to make a 75 amp hour or something crazy so not really needed but you know we try to make this as universal as possible so i do want to talk about legalities on this because that last video i put up there's a lot of people saying well you can't ride this in the road it's illegal this is bs spark has been one of the only companies in the entire industry that has been supplying bikes with a VIN MCO certificate of origin 
all the legal stuff you need, mirrors, headlights, turn signals, horn, to be able to ride this in the road. These are all 100% legal. I'll say it again. They are all 100% legal. We have had them registered with the NHSTA. They follow all federal guidelines as a motor driven cycle. So when we're talking about making high speed bikes, we decided to focus on the Javelin. And I know a lot of people are like, well, why can't you put pedals on this bike? Please put pedals on this bike. We're focusing on making a low cost entry level electric motorcycle with the Javelin. That's the whole goal here, guys. We want you to say, okay, am I gonna get a Yamaha or a Honda uh, entry motorcycle for four to $5,000? Or am I gonna get something like a Javelin that I can start off and register it as a moped, feel comfortable, and then eventually get my motorcycle license and upgrade this power, get it registered as a motorcycle, put a motorcycle plate on it, and I'm good to go. Plus I don't have to deal with any gas engine maintenance. The thing always turns on. You can charge it inside your house. It is as worry-free as you could possibly get for a two-wheel vehicle. I've had gas motorcycles, gas mopeds for years now, and you know, it's this constant battle of how things are going. On electric, you just turn it on and go, and it really lowers that barrier for you to get into motorcycles. There's a lot of people who get into motorcycles in the very beginning and then they have one or two problems with the engine and they just get completely turned off by their thing and they forget it forever. On something like an electric bike, it kind of takes that whole worry out and just allows you to fall in love with riding a bike on the road and get more miles out. But these are absolutely 100% not e-bikes. And in most places, you just need a driver's license. But all you got to do is look up your state's DMV and see what do they consider as a motor driven cycle. You can go to our website, we link to all of those documents that show it all. So I just want to be very clear about that. All right guys, so I hope that helped you understand why we are building the higher power Javelin over the Brute. Uh, we're really, really happy on how these bikes are looking. Um, all the customization has just been a ton of fun. You know, we're going to be doing some custom builds that you can buy on our site. Um, and if you have a Gen 1 Javelin and you want to update to an 8 kilowatt motor, you can do that. Uh, and if you're thinking about getting into the Javelin, we have our 8K or our 4K version for you to choose from.